Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I just say, I'm not in the least bit surprised to see so many people here. This is, to my mind, as many critics' minds, one of the breakout comedies in recent years. Um, we've taken to it so well, I think partly because the troubles have necessarily been portrayed... <laughs> you could all hear that, right? Uh, the troubles have necessarily been portrayed in quite a bleak way in drama and TV before, of course, but it is human nature sometimes to laugh in times of great difficulty, and I think that's what Derry Girls does so brilliantly. And, of course, the characterisation, the performances, and that little dollop of nostalgia, of course, I think is why we all love it so much. Um, Lisa, I'd like to start with you, if I may. Of course, what, what we do love about it is there's, there's the element of nostalgia, as I say, you pick the 1990s, which is a great time for music, a great time for fashion, but of course a very politically important time as well. And so yeah. when you were approaching or when you had the idea, which came first, or did they come as a, as a duo? No, I always said, um, from when I began writing, I'd never write about the troubles, I swore to myself, I was so <laughs> sick of it. Um, so I wanted to do a modern day, I grew up in the 90s, but I wanted to just um, sort of erase the troubles from us. I'll say it in, in Derry, but um, just take that headache away. I, as I saw it as um, a problem, and luckily one of our exec producers, Liz Lane, I've worked with for a long time, was like, maybe, you know, you're taking away one of the really interesting things about it, and it is your experience, it's authentic. Just sort of give it a go. And I sort of huffed for a bit and then started writing it. And it, you know, she was right. I have no experience outside of growing up in the Troubles. So, um, yeah, yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, that the authenticity is incredible. I mean, I watch it, as I'm sure many people of a certain age do, here going, I had that duffel bag and I had that choker. <laughs> and that's also what we love about it. Right? Was that fun for you to do as a writer, to delve into that world? It was, yeah. Like, uh, for, for me, it's. Um, those it's mostly the the cultural references that's um, you know like the reference things like Pulp Fiction for weddings and funerals. I, I, for weddings and funerals, sorry, I have a lot of fun doing that. Um, we have an amazing costume designer called Kathy Pryor, who's just a genius, and yeah. um, so she does all of of that those sort of terrible jumpers that Mama Mary wears. <laughs> you know, she 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 just finds these amazing pieces, and um, yeah, so. And, and I think we all get quite excited <laughs> seeing what she sort of found. Or, yeah. or <laughs> horrified, depending which character yeah. you do. <laughs> <laughs> if you do sometimes you want the short story, don't you? Nicole? I think maybe I do. The ski pants made a return for series two. That was a pretty depressing revelation. <laughs> Welcome to the trailer day one went off. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Sorry, I, I keep swearing to say, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Are there children in here? Does anyone mind? <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> script and all the feedback that I've had from my Northern Irish friends is that they just love the fact that, that the language has, people have tried to do it before and failed and it hasn't felt authentic and it feels very authentic to them. So as the cast, is it just a joy to have these scripts and go, that is actually how we speak, that's right, that's the banter we use. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think uh, Lisa's writing is so well crafted, the rhythm of our accents at home and um, that's, that's sort of in the genius of Lisa's work, is finding the comical beat nearly in these slangs and in these sentences and, and the rhythm of how something is said. Um, and I mean, with some cracker sayings, it would be a Sunday <laughs> from us. <laughs> And James, have you, uh, have you learnt... Oh, sorry, Dylan, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good your acting is. I think you are James. <laughs> sorry, Dylan. How has it been for you? Are there moments where you're kind of like, somebody tell me what this means, what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand any of it. Like, no, no, I didn't. Know, but, but um, yeah, no, learning new slang is cool. Like, there's... Um, uh, Wayne, Wayne means uh, kid. Uh, no, sorry, he's Wayne. Uh, and uh, yeah, we we can mean big or small, uh, small or big. Like it's it's all like a whole new thing. Really. Um, yeah. I feel like there's lots of people out there probably talking about a ride now as well, right? That's been yeah. Uh, yeah. Ride's a good one. Yeah. It's a great one. What about the word ride? I don't know, you can say something. Uh, yeah, it it's a noun and a verb, it's, all, it's, it's a multi-purpose word, it's wonderful. I remember when I first moved to England and I was at UNI and I would be asking my friends, did you write him? And they would be like, that's so grotesque. <laughs> I, actually, I actually don't, I think it's, it's a much nicer word, it's lovely. It's much better. It is. It's more, it's more casual. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was fun, right? <laughs> 
It's more adventurous. Yeah, it's yeah. super adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up. <laughs> He's really writing. I know that the show is obviously popular throughout the UK now, but also internationally. You have fans all over the world now. So is there any part of you that goes, I need to make sure this is kind of understandable for an international audience? Or do you just think, I'm just going to write it how I want to write it? And they can go away and look up that word. Not for an international audience, because obviously we did not have any idea that was going to happen. Um, for, a, for the British audience, uh, I have chosen the sense care that I use carefully. I don't use, some of them are so crazy. <laughs> I, mean, um, I don't use all of them. Um, so, it's, so like Wayne, it's very easy to grasp, and I think Scottish people might say it as well, you know, like, and you just think it's just wee one, you know. Um, so I try to use ones that, with a, without much explaining, even if you don't know, within the context, um, you would know what it meant because I was always very aware the show was going out across Britain as well, you know. Um, but not for the for for the I don't think about the international audience. It was sort of done as well by the time we were there. It was like well, <laughs> so no. I, I, and with the exception of Dylan, of course, we have, I mean, we've had boys behaving badly for years. We've had the between us, we've had men behaving badly. This is girls behaving badly. And was it always your intention to have that very female-led, very strong cast? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I never um, seen anything. I, lots of shows of female leads I loved, but that really represented me and my friends and how sort of, you know, Dickish we were, and <laughs> awful and unattractive, and you know, just. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very attractive people. Yeah. You get the behaviour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like, the, just complete messes, and I just always felt the boys had all the fun, and so like stuff like, um, you know, even like we have a, a Reservoir Dogs reference on it, where they're strutting down the street. When I watched Reservoir Dogs, probably before I should have been, when I was a teenager or whatever, I wanted to be the guys in the suits. I didn't want to be the waitress, you know, that had one scene and a couple of lines or whatever. Like, I just thought we never got to do all those fun, cool things on screen, so I thought these gears are going Um So yeah, that was, that was something I really set out to do. And, and for you, for uh, for Nicola and Sasha, and um, is it, oh, Louisa, sorry, I, I don't know if you want the microphone because we, oh. we haven't heard from you yet, but is it a joy <laughs> to get to do this part where you're kind of, you're not always behaving well, you make mistakes, you, you sometimes slip up, but, you know, we take you to our heart anyway. Those parts can't be that easy to find sometimes. It's very fun uh, to play girls who aren't sexualised and who are very pure and don't censor themselves. Um, that's very fun and important to us that we're not pretty or you know that we're not the waitresses and we're not and I think that should be shown more on screen so I'm so glad that we're part of it. Yeah. It was fun as well, well it was like a real privilege actually to um because I think it's funny you forget when a show is out and it's established of, of what the the world of the show is you kind of go okay but we were filming series one going god I did a pretty big I made some big choices today you know like you know, because we're like, we obviously contort our faces a lot and we don't worry about how we sit or how we are or anything like that. But you kind of go, I don't know how that's going to translate or how people are going to, you know, respond to it. But it's been incredible that, like, Mike and Mike, our director, and Lisa gave us that freedom to do that. And it's really freeing. And it, we talked about it a lot, didn't we, about how we hope that teenage girls would watch and see something kind of refreshing for them. And, you know, I, I think it's boring watching an actor that's fame. So it's always sitting like this and has to talk a certain way. Like, that's boring. I don't want to see that. I want to see someone with a big double chin and like. <laughs> <laughs> the other strength, of course, is that it is about family. Um, and every time we see you at home, there's aunties popping in, there's chaos, there's babies, there's washing, there's laundry. All of that stuff feels super real as well. And I guess, is that perhaps why, even if you're not from Derry, even if you're not from this world, is that what appeals to such a big audience, do you think? Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do. I think it's um, the, the, the universality of the world. Everybody can understand. Um, it's the sort of uh, reimagined nostalgia, in a way, um, regardless of the house you grew up in, regardless of the actuality of a washing machine and your own mother and whether or not your grandfather lived with you, you go, oh yeah. Yeah, that was totally the same. Yeah. It's this wonderful thing that, uh, that, that that television and art does. It sort of uh, makes you feel uh, a part of a bigger thing. 
and everybody can look at Derry Girls and feel that they're part of it. Everybody can feel like a Derry Girl. Everybody can identify with that house because it is so ironically detailed yeah, yeah. in its mm. specificity. The art. It actually makes it more universal, I think. <laughs> We actually have a very nice clip to show you, uh, some of you may be familiar with, of course, but that illustrates the, the family-ness, the domesticity uh, of the company. So perhaps we can try it. <laughs> 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 instant recognition of that clip. I was like, oh yeah, I, I, remember that scene. I remember that. Um, I was talking to a friend yesterday who is here somewhere with her 12 year old son who said that what she really loves is it's family viewing. So you can watch it on different levels, but also she was saying it's a really great way of teaching her 12 year old, not only about the troubles and about the politics, but also just, this was my life before you came along. This was the 90s. This is how I used to live. And I think that is absolutely part of its appeal. You guys obviously have to get that family experience across, not only in terms of the family, but your bond as the Derry Girls. How quickly did you get that bond? How did you work on that chemistry? What did you all think when you first met each other? I love you, Well, it didn't take long, did you? For <laughs> Uh, just, just from my position within the show, I can see how close you all are and uh, how ridiculous you all are. <laughs> they, they, they are very, not like they're characters, but you are very much a unit and, um, and you very much care for each other. And I can say that from an outsider's point of view. I mean, they hate me. <laughs> I think a lot of the credit has to go to Carly Strong, our casting director, because yeah. she spent a really long time it was about six months until auditioning everyone and they saw so many different she said she saw so many amazing actors but it was about fitting the five of them together and making it seem like they've been friends like you know Eric and Tara were best yeah. friends since they were tiny little girls and then Michelle's the cool friend that comes in and then Orla's the <laughs> <laughs> the interesting one <laughs> but um, I think that really made the difference of it we met at a, a terrifying chemistry read back in February 2017 yeah. I think about that and um, yeah, that day was terrifying. I think we all thought we'd screwed it up. We went to the pub and went, well, that was it now. We did the read-through, we'll never hear about that show again. Um, but then we all, we all live in the same apartment block in, in Belfast. So yeah, it's really nice like that. I think we all just, and it's been nice sharing this experience with one another because it's been such a whirlwind that we never anticipated. So having each other through that has been really special. Yeah, and I think um, the fact that it is comedy and the fact that we enjoy playing these characters so much, it brings such a lovely atmosphere and we have an amazing crew as well, so it just sort of filters on down. And as for the family scenes, me and Louisa definitely enjoy playing those as much as we do the scenes with the gang and developing all those relationships second time round, is, it's been an amazing experience. This feels like a good time to bring Dylan in again. Has everybody seen the end of series two yet? Yeah. Do we know? Okay, so we know that he's a Derry girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> Finally. What does it mean to be a Derry girl? What is a Derry girl and, and how did you finally get there? It's a state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I just think it's really lovely to see James finally accepted. Because um, obviously he's, he was trying to be accepted by the Protestant boys uh, <laughs> and the travellers uh, <laughs> until we found out that John Joe the Traveller doesn't like Gary Barlow. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, and yeah, and, and to hear it from the girls uh, of him being accepted by them, it, like it was right under his nose the whole time and I think that really touched him and especially from a family member because I feel like he's just been torn all over the place with his family with his mum and all that, and uh, like not growing up with it, like a, yeah, his dad, dad and all yeah. that, and I just feel like, yeah, it was really touching to see. And when I read that, I was getting really quite choked up. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so happy for for James. Yeah. I, I did. Sorry, go on. I, just with regards to what a, a dairy girl can be, I think what the show shows is. Um, Ironically, considering the side of the conflict, but how loyal they are, <laughs> and, and and how family, uh, whatever that is, either biological or chosen, comes first. That friendship and heart is uh, is what matters, and sticking together and minding each other through taking the piss, <laughs> through living, is actually what being a, a dairy girl. What, 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 that that atmosphere that you're entering in that yeah. 
I doubt very much I was the only person who shed a little tear. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was very it was moving. Um, but the extended <laughs> family as well, of course, we had Ardlo Hanlon in this series. What was he like to work with? God knows. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm amazing because he's a hero um, of a lot of people, but especially for um, us, us people growing up in Ireland. And I feel like my character came from Dougal, his character in Father Dead, in so many way. I tried to make that connection with him, and he didn't quite get it, but I, <laughs> um, but I was really pushing it. But it was, it's amazing, and, and as well with, with Tommy Tiernan and, and, and Ian McElhinney, it's, it's, it's those heroes that we get to work with that makes it all the more special for us. Did you have Dougal in mind at all, Lisa, when you were writing? Um, well, he's one of my favourite... Father is one of my favourites. It comes in. Dougal's one of my favourite characters, and Ardle's one of my favourite um, comedians. So it's it, yeah. It was just um, there's always a sort of Irish character. I mean, we all know one who people consider about strange, but they have this great wisdom. Don't you think Dougal has an order has? You know, so yeah, definitely Father Ted has influenced. I watched it growing up. It's influenced me as a com comedy writer. So yeah, I think that's right. And of course, talking about religion, we talk about religion in the show, of course. Um, the girls go to Catholic school, led by their, I don't know how to describe you, slightly fearsome or... Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> She's fabulous. <laughs> Sorry, I got my, yes, I got my words. I meant that. <laughs> I heard, by the way, the reaction to um, your name being announced earlier. The whole crowd just kind of went, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> They're just surprised I'm allowed out, really. <laughs> yes, the, the order is up now, I'm allowed to leave the house. I mean, there have been huge changes in the Catholic Church in recent years. There has been a sort of sweeping liberalism, particularly in the last few years in Northern Ireland. Do you think that we could have sort of had a programme that, that took the mickey out of um, the church so much, maybe five, ten years ago, or do you think this is part of those changes? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I, I don't think there has been a liberalisation of the church in Northern Ireland. I think in the Republic there, there has been, um, I think you're referring to the repealing the Eighth Amendment. That was in the Republic. In the North, um, it's unfortunately been left behind by Westminster, but that's for another day. <laughs> yeah. And gay marriage. And gay marriage, unfortunately. Uh, Claire would still, still not be allowed to get married uh, in this day and age in Northern Ireland, even though there is a legal obligation by Westminster to outroll it to Northern Ireland. Anyway, back to the question. Um, um, in terms of being able to tell you yeah. about these things, I, I, th I think it's a very specific uh, place you can have as an Irish person. There is a distinct relationship you can have with your religion whereby you can take the piss out of it. Um, uh, like Father Ted is how old now? God, 25, 25 years. So it's not it's not a recent thing. When I first moved over to the UK, there were a lot of discussions about uh, how oppressed I was under the Catholic Church, which I wasn't necessarily. Um, and there's a view of Ireland as being far more conservative, actually, than it is. There is a discussion that we can have with the church, a dialogue that does happen, not through everything and by no means. I mean, I'm very open as to what my, my attitude would be, but... <laughs> But uh, the ability to take the piss is very much a, an Irish thing that we can do with regards to the, to the Catholic Church. Um, in, in general, comedy is a great way to, to change things as well, I think. Um, and uh, and w when religion sort of infuses every part of society uh, with, I, I, you know, I personally feel that Sister Michael is Catholic in name only. <laughs> yeah. I think she just really likes the costume. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and the actuality, the, the, the annoyances of the rules and regulations, is, uh, is, it bears no interest for her. Yeah, um, we, sorry. we said this at the start when, when we were talking to Siobhan about doing a role that she, she might be an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's like it, a lot of women and, and, and men at the church for poor people was a way of educating themselves yeah. for women, a way of not getting married yeah. and travelling mm -hmm. and, you know, having a good job, you know, and I think Sister Michael definitely saw it maybe as an opportunity. 
free rent, free accommodation. <laughs> we touched also there on, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on Claire's sexuality, which, um, you know, was, a, again, a beautiful moment. And, but it was done in quite a sort of complex and conflicted way. It wasn't just, yeah, it's absolutely fine, you're out, I'm completely fine with that. You know, the scene with the two of you together was just beautifully done. And, and how was that for you? We were terrified, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, we, we filmed at the end of week one of filming, so Sush and I had known each other, like, we'd done the chemistry read, we'd moved to Belfast, so we'd known each other, like, probably about three weeks yeah, until it was pretty intense. It was so intense. <laughs> That's no, it was. We were, we were terrified to do it, because I always say, like, if this had been a drama, you'd be like, okay, I know the beats to hit. Sometimes in a way, drama's a lot more straightforward than comedy, because you couldn't seem like, we couldn't seem like we were making fun of this experience. We talked about that, didn't we? I think that's sort of, um, is part of the, the, it's obviously a comedy, but in a way the authenticity of the show, that Lisa has created a character, an Erin, that is so selfish, <laughs> that she has fought for, gay, for, for this anonymous lesbian, and the moment that her best friend tells, it, tells her that it's her, she makes it all about herself, yeah. straight away. <laughs> um, and oh I love that, that if you gave Claire that moment, they went, look at the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so Claire would never have gotten to yeah. say. But it's, it's, it is a massive thing because I think you said it in, um, with one of the many interviews that we did of like, that you wrote, wrote it with like rose tinted glasses to a degree. Yeah, one of, uh, like a lot of um, derrigers, <laughs> that's the case. There, there's, there's, like I would have loved yeah. Someone like Claire to be able to come out it's, when I was at school, it doesn't happen. You know, there, there, there was no sort of out uh, gay gear at my school, and I just sort of always wished that people just could have at that time. You know, it would have made it, it just breaks my heart that people have to sort of hide that uh, huge part of themselves when they're a teenager and it's hard enough. So, a bit of it was like wishful thinking, you, you know. Um, yeah. We're about to have another, another clip, um, which again you will be familiar with. I think it will be a favourite. And I say before we go on, is that this T-shirt supports an LGBTQ charity in Northern Ireland called Equality. This one here, so you can go online and buy that and support the LGBTQ community in Northern Ireland. Thank you. Um, the clip we're about to see, I think, sums up again one of these kind of themes of teenage years where you kind of want to be a grown-up, but you're a little bit frightened. Um, there was a really brilliant lo uh, line from Claire, I think. Um, I, I'm not being individual on my own. And I think for me that really sums up that experience of being a teenager, as does this clip. So if we could roll clip two. <laughs> sums up that thing we were talking about before, like not being afraid to do the funny run and all the funny faces, and it's such a physical comedy, isn't it? Do you all love doing that kind of physicality? Yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> it definitely came with came with finding Aaron, and um, I feel like collectively now as a group we really age each other on. We're like, not doing better. Becomes becomes something else. But the day that we were filming that, we didn't realise that we were even running funny or running in the same <laughs> way. And I was, I was like, what are you doing? Like, did you just come up with that together? And we were like, no way. What are we doing? <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's like. It's not rotten, do you know what I mean? So it's n it's nothing I've done. There's, there's also saying in series one they're just walking down the street and I was in tears because it was so stupid. Like, I, I, it sort of like really pisses me off because it's like nothing I write is as funny as it's just walking, do you know, or running. So, you yeah. came up to me that day that you did that and you were like, did you just curtsy at the traveller? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I love that clip is because, as you alluded to before, Dylan, that goes on for James to kind of get in with the travellers. He's, he's always trying this kind of macho thing to try and get on with the other blokes, and it never quite works. Do you think we've taken to him for that reason? Because he's like the underdog. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that for sure. Like, yeah, he's trying to be a lad way too much, and <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work. But like, yeah, and that's okay. Do you know what I mean? With like, you, you, you can, guys can be feminine. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter. And I just think that's really sweet and endearing to see of James 
So yeah, in, in the end, but like he tries. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long journey to get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got there eventually. And then of course the other thing about that clip, particularly as well, that shows just that the put downs, the banter, you know, the way you guys speak to each other. Does that feel very real to you all? The way that Lisa writes those those kind of put downs. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's great because I think we talk a lot, the two of us, about how Claire and Erin think they're so morally superior. That's one of my favourite clips that was doing. Like, that's racist. Yeah, it is. And the two of them are kind of getting full up on how great they are. And then when it comes down to it, they're the worst, those two. It's like Orla and Michelle would never really judge anyone other than the, then Claire and Erin, just like they fall from grace so quickly. But it's quite fun of like how Lisa's written is that they're all kind of terrible to each other, but then they really love each other. At the end of the day, that's... I think the heart of, of the whole show. Absolutely. And you've been obviously a huge hit in Derry, haven't you? I don't know if everybody knows about this mural that's been painted. Like, how tall is it? Six feet tall or something? It's 20, 20 foot tall. 20 foot, tall. even, sorry. It's absolutely <laughs> massive. That's bigger, though. Bigger than this. Bigger. Uh, that's no, bigger. no, no, that's bigger. That's bigger, bigger but not like, but yeah, sort of like where the end of Louise's same. chin is <laughs> down, I would say. Is that fair? Yeah. 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 And what is the reaction like when you go back there? It's <laughs> <laughs> they, they know your first name in, in the corner shops. <laughs> oh, Louisa, how are you? Went into a hotel the last week. Oh, your mommy stayed with us last time she was here. I was like, oh, did she write okay? But yeah, you can't really you can't go buy toilet paper in Jerry now. <laughs> but they love it and they're still so, so proud of the show. And um, it's it's so, so nice that people of Jerry really, really took it to their hearts themselves. Um, but I think it must be so, it's strange for me obviously being from there, but it must be so bizarre for them. I keep saying to them, like, if I, if there was Fred Chagas with my face in Wolverhampton, I would say, <laughs> 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 um, if everybody in Wolverhampton knew me when I first came, I would find that so strange. And that's what it's like, back in Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a definite favourite, though. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, don't even be like, don't pretend they're like, they go up to him and she's like, stop bullying that wee fella. Stop bullying him. Like, we literally don't bully him, we're so nice. And they're like, just stop and leave him alone. We're like, they love you, don't they? They do, don't they? Like. Um, no, I did, what was it? Um, they said, um, you said it. it was I like, said um, it. I um, said you're the most beloved English man in Ireland since Jack Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> but you're internationally famous as well, right? You've been getting messages from how far afield? Yeah, from Netflix, yeah, from all over the world, like yeah. um, Brazil, yeah, South America, America, Europe. It's been yeah. very, like, yeah. And you went, you two went to New York, didn't you? And got recognised straight yeah, away. Had, yeah. yeah, and I mean, it, nearly everywhere we went, we had it got free alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that's the first yeah, for me. If you want to introduce that here, we're very open to it. <laughs> <laughs> we're very, and just make us in there. Day, we will take it and be very grateful, thank you so much. <laughs> but we did think that they got the wrong people, we were like, no. <laughs> and they were like, no, it's for you. We were like, thank you, you got the wrong person. <laughs> but yeah, it's overwhelming. And what reactions does Sister Michael get when she's out and about? <laughs> um, I've been very lucky until recently in that I haven't been recognised. <laughs> and I'm, I'm from Cork originally and I went back to Cork and... Cork uh, And I, yeah, I got, I got spotted. I was at a funeral. <laughs> yeah. And I left the church after the Mass and standing there, very solemn. Hello. <laughs> they wanted a selfie. <laughs> As the coffin was sort of I went, no, your grand, thanks. And I thought that must have been a mistake, you know? I didn't know what was happening. And then I got caught in the sort of Irish equivalent of Primark. <laughs> buying socks uh, got caught. yes no I'm, I'm getting more recognized now which is very strange very very strange um, but it's gratifying that it's because people enjoy the show so much um, and it's uh, people are people are taking it on as their own achievements as well which is which is really nice isn't it it's like they're thrilled for themselves <laughs> oh there she is just from my language <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a really quick link into, yeah, I've done well now. <laughs> <laughs> and off they go happy with themselves and you're, 
are still struggling to pay for the socks, but yeah. The funniest thing is when people go to say, do you know what's funny about it? You go, I'm not sure. And then they'll, they'll, they'll tell you the whole episode. You go, ah, oh, yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> Very, very sort of enthusiastic fans. You know, people who love it love it. Yeah. Um, we're going to introduce our, our third and final clip in a second, uh, which I find very hard to watch with uh, dry eyes. So we'll see how we get through this. Uh, you'll probably know the one I mean. Um, and I think what's absolutely brilliant about this is that it, it just shows how, as I said at the, at the top, really humour and enthusiasm and innocence and all of those things are all wrapped in amongst the most difficult times um, and i just think the balance is, is perfect um, so let's take a look at clip three Comedy. I don't know whether it's Sister Michael's face or the hand on his shoulder, <laughs> or it's just beautiful. Um, Lisa, what did you want to say with that scene and with the rest of the series? What did you want to say about the troubles? Um, I suppose I wanted to maybe. Sh I find it hard even watching that. Now. Um, I remember all my happening and everybody stood, uh, stand around the TV like that and and. Um, uh, family members who had medical training going there and um, I just I suppose I just wanted to show how protected we were from it and how there was more to it um, than that how much ordinary Catholic people don't want that um, and I think yeah I, I wanted to just tell my family my friends story really I knew how to do it at the at the at the very end because it's it's not funny obviously and but you can't have a, you can't have a show about the troubles without uh showing um, one of the atrocities of it I, I thought you know you have to sort of face it at some point so yeah that's that's what I wanted to, to do with that scene and I think Mike Lennox just did a beautiful job our directors of um of it, it you know I sort of didn't know why I was going to achieve it as well. You just sort of write it and go, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I love it. Yeah, very much. <laughs> when we started out, we knew we definitely didn't want to be cool. Because it's another thing I think about like period shows, that it's only the cool stuff survives. You know, we don't. Not that it's not cool, but you don't hear Saturday night or you know. Um, so we wanted it to be joyful. The, the 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 thing about doing a show with the backdrop of the troubles is uh, a comedy. Everything has to be bright and joyful and bouncing um, for that contrast to work. So um, it was we we liked female led stuff. We liked poppy stuff. You know, um, yeah. And I think there's lots of people that some of the some of the songs are on the script. Um, and then, but we use so much, and it's actually torturous trying to get things to work in the edit. Um, but there's a lot of us. There's my two ex execs and our director and the editors. We have um, a music supervisor, so there's 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 lots of input there. But it's just like when you've heard, you know, boys on for the seventy fifth time, <laughs> and it still doesn't work, and you're like, oh dear God, just use the cranberries again, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I sort of start with with broad political story, then I, then I work on how I want to end the series, and then I just go, oh Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> I need loads of stories. Um, so I'm at, I'm at the Jesus point now. Like, um, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to get the computer out quite soon, I think. But yeah, I'm just I'm just sort of hoping they all come to me in a dream. All the stories. For series <laughs> three. Do you know how far you'd like to go with it? Could it go beyond series three, or was this very much sort of just concentrate on one thing at a time? And I just concentrate on on the yeah the, every time I've thought, well, there's no more. That's that. I mean, I don't, I'm done. But um. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just see where this takes me. <laughs> and, um, I'm really glad this year we had an episode that was quite family heavy, that did really well, um, which I was a bit nervous about, you know, uh, the balance of that episode. So I'm um, excited to explore some of the adult stories maybe as well. 
Um, yeah, but no, nothing concrete. <laughs> Um, the, the, so the characters are all combinations of real people, apart from Grandpa Joe, he actually was my grandfather. <laughs> and he just hated me, and he had four daughters, and just, just was, was, wouldn't have known he was a feminist, but he really, really was. <laughs> so, um, and some of the situations, uh, bits and pieces, but it's always pushed for comic effect. You know, I've never burnt down a chop shop, or <laughs> killed a nun, you know, but yeah. <laughs> What about Straub's in the um, I've Orla? Orla exists, and I've met her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Orla's a real person. <laughs> she said to me when she said, I saw myself doing that dance on the stage, and I was like, Sarah, that wasn't you, you know, that was an actor called Louise Ireland. On that note, thank you so much for your absolutely super question. So go away and do that. Series 3 will be coming at some stage when Lisa has written it, so look out for it. Um, thank you again for coming, and just once again, it remains for me to say thank you so much to Lisa, to Saoirse Monica, to Louisa, to Dylan, to Siobhan, and to Nicola. Thank you.